In this example, we're going to be showing you how you can generate a dynamic list all using JavaScript, where you can add new people into the list. It's going to be output as an unordered list within the web page. And there's our output area that we started out with, and we created the input text and the button, and added the action to the button, and then the list items get added in. So whenever you add a new item, or a new person to the list, it will automatically add that person to the next item within the unordered list. So that's what we're going to be covering in this lesson. There's several ways to create page elements in JavaScript. So go ahead and create an HTML file. So we've got our index.html. We've got some page elements, including a div. We're going to add in the content into the div. And we're going to be creating all of the page elements that are added into the output area all with JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So linking over to app9.js file, I've got the browser window opened on the right hand side with the DevTools console just below. So let's go ahead and we're going to create, first we're going to create some page elements. So we do need to have a text area, an input area, as well as a button. So let's go ahead and we're going to create those. So first we're going to select that output area and select that within the object. So that will give us a way to interact and add the page elements to that particular element. And the way that we're using is we're using the query selector, so using the class in order to make the selection. And the class is just going to be output. So that selects the element into the JavaScript code. And now when I type output, we're get, we've got that selected element. So there's no content in there yet. So let's go ahead and we're going to add some content. So I want to create a few page elements and add those into the input into the output area. So first off, let's create a button. And the button is going to be using creating the document, create element. And the element that we're creating is going to be a button. So it's going to add the button or add a button element. And then we need to append it to the page. So we can use the append and then selecting the element that we've just created in order to append that. So that creates the button. There's no text in the button yet. So if you wanted to add some text within the button, so I'm going to go ahead and use the text content of the element that was just created. And this will say add person, as we're going to be creating a list and adding new people when they click the button to add the person. So there's our first element that we've created. We're also going to need an input area. So let's go ahead and we're going to copy the code. So it's going to be relatively the same. In this case, we're going to be creating an input. And let's uh, give the input a name. So my input. And then we don't need to add any text content. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to set. So add it into the output area. And save it. So it's adding it after. So let's actually do a prepend. So we'll add it before instead of adding it after. So it'll be added before the input area or before the button. So you could also set that within the code as well where you could add it before. So let's update some of the properties of input where we can set an attribute. And the attribute that we're going to be setting is going to be a type. And can set it as a text type. So when we save that, and now if we go over into the HTML elements, we're going to open up the body. And there's our input with the type of text. So you can also set different types of attributes into the elements that you've created. So right now we're going to leave it at that where we've created the input area. And we've got them selected within the global object. So we can select the button and the input. So what we want to do is we want to add an action to the button. So take the button and add an event listener to the button. The event that we're listening for is going to be a click. So whenever the button gets clicked, then what we'll want to do is add a person. So we're going to run a function called add person. So then create the function. And we're going to be getting all of the parameters directly from the input area. So what that's just going to do is that's going to add a person to the array. So let's also set up some variables. We're going to create an array of people. And this is just our default starting array. So we can add some people's names in there. So there's, that gives us a list of people. So what we want to do is we want to take that input and add it to the array where we've got the people. 
we're going to get the value that's contained within the my input and then just take the value that's contained in there and then take the array and we'll push whatever that new person value is into the array and for now we'll list out the array so that we can see that the content is being added into the array and then afterwards we can output it into the page so we've got test and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a value into my input so I don't have to always keep typing a value into there. And I'll do another Lawrence spell with a W, save it. So now we can just add the person. So this is just good for testing so we don't have to constantly keep adding people into the list. So this gives us an array and then whatever values we've got there, we can add those into the list. So this is creating a list of array items. So what we also want to do is we want to create an area where we're going to output the list of people. So let's do that where we're going to create another page element. And this one's going to be the unordered list. So this will be where all of the people are going to go that we're going to be adding. And using the document where we create an element. And creating the element is going to be an unordered list and then take the output append and we're going to append the unordered list. So right now we don't have anybody in our list so we save it. We don't see anything being output there but what we want to do is we're going to create a function and call it build and what this function will do is this is going to build from the array a list of people so we're going to create them dynamically and take the my array and then use the for each and as we loop through each one of the items in the array, we're going to build out the list of people. So taking the unordered list, and we're going to create a bunch of list items. So using document, create element, and the element that we're creating is going to be a list item. And then appending it to the unordered list, we'll append the list items to the unordered list. And within the list item, let's set the text content to be whatever we've got the value for the element is and save that. So when we run build, that's going to build the list of people within the array. And then when we run it again, it's going to actually be adding to the unordered list because we're adding it constantly to each one of the new items there. So what we want to do is we want to, instead of having it when we're building it, so whenever the unordered list is ready and it's prepared, we'll just add in the option to build. And that will automatically build the list of people. And here is where we want to add the new people into the list. So let's create another function. And I'll call it adder. So this is going to add a person. And within here, we'll take out the code that we just used. And it'll just create the person and then append it to the unordered list. So here we can send through, instead of all of that code, we can just simply add in the person's name directly within the list. So now whenever we add, we can add the person to the list. So we're pushing the new person add the person to the list. So that gives us a way to add new people to the end of the list and also how we can add dynamic items into our current list.